Joining me now is Haley Wickenheiser. Haley, we were talking before and you said it's a little bit weird for you to be on this side of the ice. Tell us what you're up to and why you are on this side of the ice. Yeah, thanks Paige. No, I'm, uh, I'm in medical school um, as well as my role with the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I'm in my third year and I'm doing an elective uh, here in London for a few weeks with Dr. Wanda Millard, who's the, the Knights team doc as well. So uh, we were laughing. I've worn a lot of uniforms with her, usually as hockey equipment. Now I'm in scrubs <laughs> and the Emerge and uh, yeah, just being on this side of the rink. Um, I don't know if I'm ready for anything to happen quite at this point, but it's it's an adventure. Soon, that will definitely come, and you will be mm -hmm. fully fully equipped. Now, Haley Wickenheiser, what a household name, you know, throughout the country for families and so many young kids. I know whenever it was the Olympics, it was Haley Wickenheiser. That's what that means. What do you say to young girls who are hoping to pursue a career in hockey? Well, I mean, I think, um, you know, just looking at these young girls over here that uh, want to, you know, love the game. And it, I think women's hockey has a future. There's going to be a professional women's league. Um, right now, there's um, one league that exists and no professional women's hockey to be to be found. So I think the NHL does have a plan for the women's game. And it's a matter of time before that plan is, you know, seen through. And I think the best uh, 100 players in the world will have a have a league and get paid sort of similar to uh, a WNBA type model. So uh, it's coming. I hoped it happened in my career and it didn't. And uh, I think starting to get a little impatient with where it's at. But um, right now we just have to kind of keep pushing ahead. And, um, you know, for these young kids, they're going to have a league one day. And that's pretty exciting. Yeah. When you say pushing ahead, what would you say, you know, that looks like for all the people that are fighting towards that for there to be a professional league mm -hmm. what does that look like in your opinion well i think the only way forward for women's hockey um the survival is um probably an nhl or some really deep pockets and right now i know the nhl have had several conversations with them that they're they have a plan they have a a sort of a format in place where I'd likely be six teams on the eastern seaboard that would play sort of like an original six um, in a, a shortened season, like a 30-game season. And um, there's a current league called the National Women's Hockey League. It's uh, currently ongoing in the U.S. And mm -hmm. people say, oh, you know, we need people to step up for women's hockey. But right now, the, the biggest problem with the women's game is, is the women in the game running the game um, in that league that really should uh, need, need to step aside to allow the NHL to step in and do what needs to be done for the game. And that's why all these players are holding out and not playing um, in the league. The best players in the world are, are currently not playing in a league. So right. when that's a pretty strong statement, I think it's really it's great of them to, to have done that. And there's so many players fighting with the PWHPA as well. Yeah. What's it like for you to see that, you know, that with things like the Dream Gap Tour and they're traveling right. around, you mm -hmm. know, the, the continent as well? Yeah, I think that's that's sort of the lockout year. If you want, if people are watching, you know, like the NHL lockout, that's kind of what's happening in women's hockey, uh, the Dream Gap Tour, and you know, the women that played at the NHL All Star Game all came from the Dream Gap Tour. They didn't come from that league that exists in the U.S. So it's a it's another statement from the NHL, I think, moving forward. So it's what has to be done to to I guess get what you want in the end. It's a short term pain, hopefully for a long term gain and for the health and the longevity of uh, the women's game moving forward. Now to bring it back to the elective you're a medical student right now what are you learning from from Wanda when you're on the job with her <laughs> well I'm in the eMERGE so it's uh it's long shifts at the at, actually, she likes to work night shifts so mm. that's a change for me usually I'm sleeping at night <laughs> and, uh, um, so uh, you know I really get a lot of perspective I, I go and I get to work with the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Marlies and on a day-to-day -day basis and get to be around professional athletes to get paid a lot of money and then you walk into the eMERGE and often people are having the worst night of their lives mm. and they're down on their luck a lot of times so I uh, have a lot of empathy for that and it just um, makes me so grateful when I go to the rink. Uh, I always think to myself, life's not so bad. Mm -hmm. Well, Haley, yeah. thank you so much for joining us and thank you for absolutely everything that you've done paving the way for uh, women in hockey, women in sports in general. Well, thanks for having me.